Hi everybody, Paytm is in trouble. On 31st of January 2024, the Reserve Bank of India barred Paytm Payments Bank from offering all of its core services. The Indian digital payment app Paytm has come under fire. India's central bank has dropped the hammer on Paytm Payments Bank. Persistent non-compliance, that is what the Reserve Bank has stated in its order. The RBI has struck hard. Yeah, terrible evening uh, for us. And as we all saw, the moment this news came out, Paytm stock dropped by 36% in just two days to a record low of 487 rupees. As a result, Paytm lost $2 billion in market value. Now, in this process, 300 million wallets, 30 million bank accounts, and 8 million fast tags in Paytm's portfolio are being affected. And what's even worse is that this is not the first time RBI slapped Paytm with restrictions. If you look at this chart by the Ken, RBI banned Paytm Payment Bank from onboarding new users in 2018 and 2022. RBI rejected their payment aggregator license, they issued them a penalty of 5.4 crore rupees and the ED has even rated their premises. The Enforcement Directorate carried out searches at premises linked to Paytm. The Enforcement Directorate has carried out searches in uh, the Chinese loan app case. There have been raids taking place at Paytm and Razorpay. Now while most people might directly blame Paytm, Ashni Grover interestingly said, while government toots the horn of UPI all across the world, it's actually punishing the pioneers in the space and it's killing the sector. So on one side, while we are looking at a strong RBI restricting the biggest players for flouting the rules, foreign investors might actually see India as an anti-startup ecosystem because of which these big steps that penalize the pioneers of India might go on to affect our reputation across the world. So let's dive into one of the craziest case studies of the year and try to understand why is the RBI being so harsh to Paytm? What did they do wrong? Will you be affected if you use Paytm's UPI and Fastag? Can Paytm survive this crash? And most importantly, what are the lessons that we need to learn from this massive challenge of Paytm? This video is brought to you by One Person Club. People, as the Indian middle class continues to get richer, a lot of new age companies are emerging in the world of fintech. And one such company is the One Person Club, founded by my dear friend Sharan, also known as Finance with Sharan. And it also has Nikhil Kamat as the investor. The vision of One Person Club is to help you achieve financial independence, which is the superpower to never work for money again. You see, the Indian education system only focuses on helping you get a job and a salary. But what good is that salary if you don't know how to manage and use it to grow your wealth? In fact, many famous people like Amida Bachchan and Michael Jackson have gone broke even after earning hundreds of crores. This is how dangerous financial mismanagement is. But this is where One Person Club comes in as a solution to this growing problem in India. One Person Club is a new age fintech company which is trying to solve this problem through its Financial Freedom University, 25 plus financial planning tools, a 50,000 plus online community and tons of networking events happening in all major cities across India. So if you don't want to make the mistake of neglecting your finances right from your 20s, if you're serious about taking control of your hard earned money and most importantly, if you want to learn about early retirement planning, tax planning and insurance planning, use the link in the description to join the One Person Club and become a part of this wonderful finance community. And now, on with the episode. To understand what's happening to Paytm Payments Bank, you first need to understand the fundamental difference between a traditional bank and a payments bank. A payment bank is a simplified version of a traditional bank with very limited functions. In Paytm's case, you can store a maximum of 2 lakh rupees and you can make transactions and pay people using a debit card. And you can even earn interest when the payment bank invests your deposits. But when you make this deposit, the money is not deposited with Paytm directly. And this is where the limitation comes in. So what Paytm would do is, they would move your money to a fixed deposit with a partner bank like Indescent Bank. And then, the interest that your deposit generates from Indescent Bank will be passed on to you, the customer. And just like this, even for loans or credit cards, while a payment bank can offer complex financial services, it is not their own service. So just like they partner with Indescent Bank for your FDs, they can distribute loans and credit cards by partnering with third-party providers. In Paytm's case, they have partnered with various lenders for personal loans like Aditya Birla Finance Capital and Tata Capital. So this is the difference between a payment bank and a bank. Now the question over here is why can't you directly buy from Aditya Birla and why can't Aditya Birla cut out Paytm and sell directly to the customers? 
Well, they can, but Paytm brings in its super power of tech and data. So if you look at a personal loan process, taking a personal loan from a bank involves extensive documentation and multiple branch visits. Whereas because Paytm has your transaction history and identity documents, it is able to use this data to process your loans digitally in just five minutes. This is the superpower of a Paytm payment bank. So this is essentially what a payment bank can and cannot do. Now you might say, dude, but I don't have a savings account with Paytm payment bank. I haven't taken a loan from Paytm payment bank. I have only used Paytm UPI app and it's fast tag. So the question is, will you be affected by this ban if you are this kind of customer? Well, as it turns out, you definitely will be affected. So let's get into the intricacies. By 29th of February, Paytm Payments Bank will not be able to take fresh deposits and they will also not be allowed to make transactions via savings bank account, wallet, fast tag and UPI facility. So the question is, why is the UPI and fast tag facility being affected? Well, to understand this, let's take a look at the backend tech of your UPI. You see, when you scan a QR code and transfer money to your Fruitwala, the virtual money is transferred from your bank account via Paytm to a nodal account and the transaction confirmation is sent to the merchant. And then within 24 hours or so, the money is actually transferred to the Fruitwala. So a nodal account is like an interim escrow account where the payments are pooled together before sending the money to the merchants. Now, if you look at the suffix of your UPI account, you will see at the rate Paytm. This suffix is nothing but an indication of the fact that your nodal account is with Paytm Payment Bank. Similarly, if you use phone pay, you will have a suffix YBL. And this says that your nodal account is with Yes Bank. Similarly, if you're using Google Pay, you might see the suffix OKHDFC OK Bank. This is because phone pay and Google Pay rely on Yes Bank and HDFC for their nodal account services. Whereas when it comes to Paytm, they were relying on their own payment bank for their nodal account services for many of their transactions. And this is where your UPI and FastTag services get affected because now Paytm Payment Bank is restricted by the RBI. After February 29th, the payments bank will no longer be able to operate its mobile wallet. It has also been barred from taking further deposits, credit transactions or top ups. Customers using Paytm wallets won't be able to top them up. Basically, if you see a Paytm QR code anywhere you are, chances are it won't work because the RBI has as good as killed it. So now to survive and not lose customers, Paytm has to change the nodal account to another bank. And this is a very, very big deal because in December 2023, Paytm Payment Bank recorded 2.8 billion transactions out of its 12 billion transactions made via Paytm. So they have to find partners to process almost 3 billion transactions and that too before 29th of February. And typically, it takes anywhere between 2 to 3 months just to set up a nodal account, let alone building the capability of processing 3 billion transactions. So now industry experts speculate that Yes Bank or ICICI may have the infrastructure to grab this opportunity. And if this is true, ICICI and Yes Bank will obviously benefit from this RBI restriction on Paytm. This is the first problem that Paytm needs to solve by 29th of February. The second UPI problem that Paytm needs to solve is their merchant payment. You see, Paytm is such a mammoth that they have 37 million merchants who use the Paytm payment bank to receive money. And in the next one month, Paytm has to convince these millions of merchants to stop using their Paytm payment bank account and then link another bank account to their UPI address. On top of that, from what we've read, they might also have to change their QR code. So they will have to issue new QR codes and paste the new QR codes on the millions of sound boxes wherever it is linked to Paytm payment bank. So obviously, this is a logistical nightmare. The third problem is their ecosystem disruption. You see, Paytm's strength has always been its strong relationship with merchants and the host of products and services it could offer with its backend system provided by the Paytm payment bank. And now, this ecosystem itself is being disrupted. This is the reason why Paytm is at the risk of losing large number of merchants to other platforms. And this may cause 300 to 500 crores in EBITDA loss to Paytm. And lastly, because lending is 20% plus of their revenues, it will also affect their partner relationship and a large chunk of their revenue. But now the question over here is, why did the Indian government take such a harsh step against Paytm because Paytm has been a pioneer of fintech in India. It was a savior for India during demonetization and it is even bridging the MSME credit gap in India. 
So the question is, why is the government penalizing the pioneer in the fintech space of India? Well, if you look at this chart, Paytm Payments Bank got a license in 2015 and they started operations in 2017. And this Ken article from 2018 tells us something very, very interesting. So what Paytm was doing was, they were including a clause in their KYC form that made the customers have a default Paytm Payment Bank account as a result of doing their KYC. And KYC was obviously required in order to use features like the Paytm wallet. So millions of Paytm wallet users in 2015, 16 and 17 opened up a Paytm bank account by default. Now this is a grey area because they were not getting a direct consent to open a bank account from the customers. And then another set of challenges started when Paytm started their savings account in 2017. And during this time, they recruited agents and the situation got worse. These agents were incentivized to get people to open the savings account with a payment of 50 rupees per account. So many agents got 25 entries per day and they earned a solid 25 to 30,000 rupees a month. And you know what? This led to agents hiring more agents, which then became a multi-level marketing scheme. For example, if I became an agent, I would hire you as an agent and I would offer you 30 rupees per account opening and make 50 rupees per account myself. So you make 30 rupees and I make 20 rupees because of you. And if you look at this poster, messages like this were promising 20,000 rupees a month to look for people who wanted to become an agent. But the catch over here is that how these people got consent from the customer for the savings account was not at all clear. So not so surprisingly, RBI prohibited Paytm from opening more bank accounts because they found that the third party agents were doing the decision making on behalf of the customer, which may not be entirely with their consent. This is the second reason for Paytm's situation. And lastly, we have the China reason. Ministry of Home Affairs just last week has pushed a ban on Chinese loan apps as well as betting apps. The $200 billion Chinese giant Alibaba and its financial arm and financial services are injecting fresh capital into Paytm. The Ministry for Information Technology is saying that they had complaints uh, over risks of data being transferred out of India uh, via these apps. Now, in case of Paytm, Ant Group, which is a Chinese company, they hold 9.89% stake in Paytm. As of December last year, Antfin held almost 10% stake in Paytm. This is concerning for the Indian government because they fear a data leak to China. This is the reason why the Indian government has continuously taken actions against Paytm. First, they launched an investigation into Paytm's data security practices in February 2022, and then they required Paytm to appoint an independent auditor to review its data security practices in March 2022. And then the government asked them to report its finding directly to the Indian government. Then in March 2022, again, Paytm was prevented from onboarding new customers, and they even rejected Paytm Payment Bank's payment aggregator license. These actions had a significant impact on Paytm's business. And what made matters worse is the audit report because the audit report stated, and I quote, persistent non-compliances and continued material supervisory concerns in the bank. Now, we don't have the details of what these non-compliances were. So this is all that we can tell you. And this brings us to the last question. What are Paytm's next step to stay afloat in this situation? And as shareholders or users, should you be worried about Paytm? Well, in short, Paytm will have to move from Paytm Payment Bank to other bank partners and then they'll be able to expand their payments and financial service business. At the same time, the services that operate using other banking partners will continue. This is where Yes Bank or HDFC or ICICI might go on to become beneficiaries of the Paytm situation. And lastly, from what we have read, their merchant payment network offerings like Paytm QR, Paytm Soundbox and Paytm Card machines will continue. So this brings us to the last part of the episode and that are the business lessons that we need to learn from this Paytm case study. Lesson number one, the Indian government was, is and will continue to be the godfather of the Indian business ecosystem. So always listen to what the big daddy tells you. Secondly, and I've mentioned this earlier also, geopolitics is a defining factor in business. So as entrepreneurs, you have to be extremely careful while raising money and engaging in markets that are not so friendly with India. And lastly, incentives when not calculated might go on to become a disaster. In this case, Paytm launched its payment bank incentives with a good business intent. But it is the people who took it out of control which then became a disaster for Paytm. And if you read history, this has happened to multiple companies many times in the past. So 
you have to be extremely careful with the incentives that you provide this is the story challenge and the situation of paytm and now what remains to be seen is how will vijay shekhar sharma and his team make a comeback in the indian fintech space that's all from my side for today guys if you learned something valuable please make sure to hit the like button in order to make youtube aba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye